Hello, welcome to our reflection. David prophesied in the Psalms the birth of Jesus and his death and resurrection. To those early Christians, after Jesus' death, what did resurrection mean to them? Did they think it was just the spirit that went to heaven and the body still lay in the ground? David died and was buried but his decayed body stayed in the tomb, whereas Jesus' body was properly alive again after the resurrection. Our reading today comes from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 22 to 36. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to that definite plan and foreknowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always be before me, for he is my, my right hand so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. For seeing this David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah saying, He was not abandoned to Hades nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses, being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out this that you both see and hear. For David did not ascend into the heavens, but he himself says, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Therefore let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Peter is talking to the crowds about death and resurrection. Previously he has talked about the phenomenon of the wind, fire and the babbling tongues of Pentecost. Now he changes direction to talk to the crowds about resurrection. The resurrection was not something God did on the spur of the moment. It was planned and prophesied about before the days of King David. It was a fulfilment of the promise made by God through King David. Jesus raised from the dead is the true son and heir of David, the rightful King of Israel. What is resurrection? It's not as many thought a disembodied spirit going to heaven and leaving the body behind. No. Resurrection did not mean that. Resurrection is about the physical body being properly dead and then properly alive again. Therefore the normal decay which follows death wouldn't happen. David foresaw the Messiah's resurrection and spoke of it in the Psalms, saying, he was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. Jesus' shameful and horrible death was an act of wicked, unscrupulous and lawless people who handed him over to the pagan Romans knowing that the death he would suffer. Every stage of that journey to the cross was marked by all sorts of evil doing its worst to him. Christians quickly came to see that with the resurrection and the gift of the Spirit, this was all part of God's plan for the world. Peter quotes from Psalm 16, written by David, 
and talks of a way of life in which he who dies will not be abandoned and suffer the usual fate of decay. He will come through on the other side, meaning that as Christian and follow Christians and followers of Christ, there is a place waiting for us after death. That place is heaven. Evil was rife throughout society at the time of Jesus' death. Rome, although having a system of justice, was rotten to its core, and Israel with its temple and its hierarchy revealing a hollow heart. The early Christians believed that the violence against an innocent Jesus, who had done nothing to deserve his crucifixion, was all part of God's plan. Today we have a lot of bad stuff going on around the world. Wars, corruption, hunger, homelessness, and much of this is man-made. Here we have scams going on all the time, where people are trying to steal from us or take advantage of us in different ways. It may not be on the same scale as the corruption we see in some governments, but nevertheless it is evil at work. As I'm writing this, my thoughts turn to the many rotten and corrupt countries around the world, and Lebanon came to my mind. The suffering in Beirut over the past week has been hard to see. None of us can understand what these people are going through. Over 200 people died, including firefighters, nurses, and a two-year-old Australian boy. Thousands injured, and an estimated 300,000 are homeless. This, of course, is on top of the pandemic. What have the people done to deserve this? It appears to be the result of a corrupt and uncaring government, port officials and others involved in corruption. Unfortunately, when evil is in society, it can easily affect all around. But the news reports of the past week have also seen the best of the Lebanese people. People from all over the country have turned out to help in the clean-up. All faiths, it doesn't matter, they've all turned up. And an international response to the need for aid, as food is short and also medicines, has seen a good response from many countries. As Christians, we know that our future after death is a place in heaven, but we need to avoid the evil around us before that. If there is co corruption and fraud in the society around us, it's very easy to get unwittingly sucked in, especially when a large part of society sees it as the norm. There are some countries where corruption is just seen as the way to get things done. It's not even seen as particularly evil. We will not be resurrected as Jesus was. Our bodies will decay. Jesus was dead, but then became alive again, and met with many people before he ascended into heaven. Our spirit goes to heaven. We will not need our bodies in heaven. One question I'm often asked is, what is heaven like? I must answer that I don't know. It will be beyond anything we can imagine. So it looks as though the only way I'll find out is when I'm dead. Amen. Father, help us to be good Christians and look to your word in our lives. We thank you for giving us your son. We thank you for his resurrection and ascension, ascension to be at your side. Help us to stand up against injustice and corruption and put our faith in you before any temptation that comes our way. Amen. Thanks for joining me.